Just wait a second. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Back by popular demand, my guest is Chef Val, and she is going to be making some delicious vegan sugar-free desserts that are perfect for the holidays or really any time. She's going to be making some fig truffles, a pumpkin nut eggnog, not, not, I, I can't say it, but it's, it's like an eggnog, but it's not because there's no eggs and a whipped cream made out of aquafaba, which I can't wait to see. And whoever invented this idea of using the bean water for desserts, let's, let's thank them because it's, it's game changing. Please welcome back Chef Val. How you doing? Well, hi, Chef AJ. I'm doing very well. Coming to you from the very cold state of Michigan. How cold it's- is it? Three degrees. Okay, that's really cold. I'm not going to complain about when it's 30 and 29 here then. (laughs) And with the wind chill, it's like minus 17. Uh, It's good indoor weather, right? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. What have you been up to since your last appearance on Chef AJ Live? Well, I'm still teaching all my cooking classes, which I love. And I came out with my uh, number six cookbook. Nice. Where can we get your cookbooks? Um, my website, macroval.com. Nice. This is the new cookbook, Simply Healthy, Scrumptious Desserts. And the fig truffle recipe and the aquafaba whipped cream recipe is in this book. The pumpkin not eggnog is a special holiday treat that I wanted to do. So that one is not in here, but uh, yeah, this has um, all, of course, sugar-free and vegan, of course, and chocolate chip cookies, peanut butter and jelly cookies, ginger snap cookies, um, chocolate dulse candy. Wow. Candy made with dulse. That's unusual. Yeah, I do that. I have a few of them that way. It's so interesting to put like a sea vegetable in a dessert. Mm-hmm. It really is. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't wait to see your magic. And well, that came out in July. I, I it came out on my birthday, July 11th. And also right around my birthday, I got a new kitten. Oh, your birthday, 7-Eleven, just like the store. <laughs> yes, 7-Eleven. Yeah. And her name is Jewel. And she likes to sleep in my Christmas tree. <laughs> what is she going to do when you take it down? I know. So my Christmas tree is decorated with all unbreakable things this year because I find it very funny when she gets in the tree and I just laugh. That's adorable. Yeah. So you celebrate Hanukkah, right? I don't really celebrate. I'm, I've never been a fan of the holidays. I'm going to be honest. I mean, Thanksgiving's okay, but I'm just not a holiday person. I'm a little bit of a, a Scrooge or a Grinch. I just bah humbug. <laughs> yeah, it's not my thing. Well, I kind of really enjoy the holidays because mainly because of the food. I get so excited when Thanksgiving rolls around. I have special Thanksgiving dishes that I make every year that are so delicious. And then at Christmas time, uh, when I was a kid, I used to make Christmas cookies with my mom. So I have these fantastic memories. We used to make cookies and my sister too. It would be like the three of us in the kitchen. We'd do cutout cookies and we'd make all these Christmas cookies and we'd give them away as gifts. So I still continue that tradition to this day. I love making Christmas cookies and giving them away as gifts. In fact, I turned some of those old childhood cookie recipes and converted them with all organic, whole foods, sugar-free, you know, vegan, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Ingredients. And so like a ginger cooking with icing, that was always one of my favorites. Um, Shortbread, love shortbread. So I've done, you know, lots of recipes where I convert them from the way they were before to how they are now. Nice. I know your business is MacroVal and your macrobiotic. How is that? Look, when you say it's sugar-free, what is sugar-free in the, in the macrobiotic world? How, How do you define it? So absolutely no white refined sugar. The sweetener that most macrobiotic people use and what I use Brown rice syrup. 
So it comes from whole organic brown rice that has been fermented. And then they mix it with an enzyme, which breaks down the starches of the whole grain. And you get this beautiful thick syrup. And this is what I use for all my sweeteners. So in macrobiotics, they want it to be whole foods from the whole plant, nothing refined or processed. So some of the other desserts would just use fruit. Like the truffle dessert, the filling of it is just fruit, you know. And uh, there's also another sweetener called barley malt that is made from the whole grain barley. And the difference is brown rice syrup is gluten-free. And brown rice syrup has a very neutral taste, so it won't overpower anything. Uh, barley malt has a molasses taste, which is great for, you know, ginger cookies, molasses cookies. This is this is the brown rice syrup right here. If you wanted to see, I use Suzanne Specialties. Um, and this is a high quality, absolutely delicious brown rice syrup. And I order it directly from the company. Of course, health food stores carry like Lundberg brown rice syrup or Sweet Cloud brown rice syrup. Those are all good brown rice syrups. But when we get to the aquafaba portion, when I'm teaching, you have to use Suzanne Specialties to make aquafaba. The other brands make the aquafaba completely collapse. So in that, and I, I forgot to include that when I gave you the recipe and I wrote it out. A lot of times I put a recipe note in there. If you want to make aquafaba, you know, whip up, you have to use Suzanne's because I've tried the other ones. And as soon as you put the other ones in there, the beautiful, you know, the aquafaba gets peaks and everything. So you goes like this and it flattens. But for some reason, Suzanne's doesn't do that. It's probably because the type of enzymes they use. Because again, they added a uh, enzyme in there. It's like a fermented brown rice enzyme. And that's how they create the brown rice syrup. How is brown rice syrup made? And on the spectrum of sweetness, let's just say powdered sugar maybe being the most sweet and molasses being the less sweet. Where does barley malt and brown rice syrup fall on the sweetness spectrum of, of sweeteners? So brown rice syrup and barley malt are the least sweet, okay? I write about that in the introduction of my new dessert uh, cookbook. I also write about that in my year-round healthy holiday dishes cookbook. And so there's different types of sugar. So we know that white refined sugar is sucrose. And then the sugar that you find in fruit is fructose. Now, the sugar that is in whole grain sweeteners, such as brown rice syrup, is maltose, M-A-L-T-O-S-E. So maltose is the least reactive sugar there is. It will never spike your blood sugar level. So that's another reason why I use brown rice syrup on a regular basis. Even people with diabetes can handle brown rice syrup. It won't spike their blood sugar level because it's maltose. So yeah, white refined sugar, very sweet. And of course, NutraSweet and all those chemical sweeteners, those are even worse. Those are just terrible. Agave, even sweeter than that, terrible, right? And then, you know, you have, um, and then you have fruit. Of course, fruit is a natural sweetness and we use that in our cooking too. And then you have uh, dates, which you like to use, which oh. has a lot of fiber in it. So that's a, that's a good sweetener too. Um, I use molasses as long as it's an organic blackstrap molasses. And I only use it at Christmas time when I make uh, like my ginger cookies. So it's a very occasional thing just for that flavor, you know. And then when I'm serving people who are used to eating sugary things, I will include maple syrup in some of my dessert recipes. And I usually use a combination, mostly brown rice syrup with a little bit of maple syrup added in there. Because if you're serving people that are used to, you know, desserts made with white sugar, they're probably going to taste the dessert with brown rice syrup and go, well, this isn't sweet. But to me, it's plenty sweet. So if you put just a little bit of maple syrup in there, it's okay. And maple syrup comes right from nature and they just boil it down. So it does have some vitamins and minerals. It does have some redeeming qualities. So when it comes to eating, you know, sugar or sugar substitutes, we want to look for something that has vitamins and minerals in it. So it's not completely empty calories devoid of all nutrition. 
So when you're looking for that, um, that's what you want to do. And if anybody's interested, uh, I recently started a Substack blog. It's called I Am the Creator of My Health. And I just put up a um, article and information about brown rice syrup so that you know people could go and read it and find out more about it. And I also shared in this blog um, a little bit of my story of overcoming eczema and how sugar affects affected my eczema many years ago. That's great. Um, I'm sure you gave it to me and I'll link to it in the show notes. Yes. Wonderful. What are you going to make first? All right. So today I'm going to make, let's do the pumpkin, not uh, egg, not first, because that's going to go on the stove and we're going to warm it up. All right. So during um, the show, I'm going to be moving the camera a bit, but I like to do that so people can see what I'm doing. So here we go. I've got my ingredients. I, and I didn't, you know, sometimes when you're you're planning things, you don't think ahead, but all three of these ingredients that I'm going to demonstrate in the show use some type of machine that makes noise. So, <laughs> all right. So this one is zoom, zoom usually mutes it. So, yeah. All right. So this is a not egg nog, and I decided to use some pumpkin in it. The pumpkin will help create the beverage being thick, but it also imparts a lot of natural sweetness. And of course we have, vitamin C, vitamin A. This is fantastic for your eyes. And, you know, I watched that lady on your show. Yes. Claudia, Claudia, yes. All about the eyes. I've, I've watched a few of her videos. I haven't implemented what she recommends, but oh, she was just so informative and wonderful. So yeah, I got canned pumpkin here, organic. In the fall time, I buy those pie pumpkins and I cut them in half and bake them in the oven. I love fresh pumpkin, but right now, you know, we're going to use this. So we want a third of a cup. So let's measure a third of a cup. This natural sweet flavor. This recipe is going to make two uh, drinks for you. Oh, and by the way, I absolutely love questions. So if people watching want to put the questions, you know, in the chat and then um, I can answer any questions at all. Um, all right. So, yeah. So Tracy says, well, what's wrong with maple syrup? Well, there's nothing wrong with maple syrup. Um, it, it, um, it's sweeter than brown rice syrup. And for people who are diabetic, you need to be careful because brown rice syrup, or excuse me, maple syrup is sucrose. So it won't affect your blood sugar and the organs in your body like white refined sugar because white refined sugar is a chemical, right? So maple syrup if you don't have diabetes, you know, you don't have to worry about that. You can use maple syrup. Again, I use it in combination because brown rice syrup is just so much healthier, right? Or you could use like whole dates, like what Chef AJ uses a lot. And if that's sweet enough for you, that's fine. Like I said, I like to put a little maple syrup in there to make it a little sweeter. But um, really, there isn't anything wrong with maple syrup unless you have blood sugar issues. Thank you. So we got it third of a cup of pumpkin in there. We're going to put a third of a cup of our brown rice syrup in there. It's thick. Wait, I want to make sure you guys can see. You can see, right? As it pours, a third of a cup going in there. So brown rice syrup has a neutral flavor. So like I said, you can use it cakes, cookies, pies. A lot of people ask me, well, you know, can I put it in my coffee or my tea or something like that? Absolutely. You know, Instead, anything instead of sugar, you don't want to put sugar in there. So brown rice syrup works very well like that. All right. So we've got the pumpkin, brown rice syrup. Now the next ingredient, we're going to put some silken tofu into the dish. This is a 12.3 ounce package, and I'm actually going to use half of it. You don't need the whole thing. I like using silken tofu in recipes where I want a beautiful, creamy consistency. And if we're going to drink this, we want it to be silky. All right. So this one you find on the shelf in the grocery store. It's not refrigerated. OK, so there is a preservative in this. If you don't like that, if you don't want to have a preservative, by all means, use fresh tofu. You know, it, it's it's up to you. I just do it for texture purposes. You know, when you get these 
packages of tofu, sometimes the most challenging thing is to open it. So I take like the corners and I fold them up like this, my scissors. See, I got all four corners and then you cut them. And of course, always buy organic soy products and or if you can't get organic, you always look for non-GMO. So after you get the four corners off, then you cut it here. I cut it here. And I cut it here. And look, it opens up. Kind of the easiest way to get it out of that packaging. And then just take a knife and just cut it in half and use half of it. And what do you do with the other half? You put it in a container and cover it with some fresh water and put it in the refrigerator. And then it'll last in the refrigerator for probably five to seven days. And you can just use it in another recipe. Have you ever frozen it? I have not frozen it. You know, it's really odd. When I got into this, you know, and was learning this, you know, 30 years ago and everything, I was taught never, ever freeze tofu. You ruin it. Never, ever freeze tofu because the texture changes. Now, lately, recently, people are like, freeze your tofu. It gives it a really cool texture. And that like profound, you know, I'm like, well, geez, I was taught never, ever freeze your tofu. And now people are doing it for the texture. So interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, oh, we need uh, one cup of oat beverage. I know a lot of people make their oat beverage themselves. And my God, that's that's even better, you know, if you want to make it yourself. If not, this is an organic one. Now, I find oat beverage to be one of the sweetest. I think it's sweeter than the soy or the almond or the rice or anything else. So I use it in my desserts. I really like the oats in my dessert. So we want one cup. Mm -hmm. One cup. Like so and then we have our spices. We have quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and a pinch of ginger and a pinch of allspice. Now nutmeg is the signature flavor of um, eggnog, right? And a long time ago, when they made regular eggnog, they would put alcohol in it. In fact, nog means beer. So a lot of times there's alcohol in it. But the signature flavor is the nutmeg. Nutmeg has anti-inflammatory properties and antibacterial properties. Back in the, um, was it the 1500s, they actually used nutmeg to treat the plague, which is ah. very interesting. Interesting. And because of the beautiful smell of nutmeg a long time ago, too, they used to burn it to try and cover up the aroma because we people were not very sanitized back then. Right. So they used to burn nutmeg to try and cover that up. And uh, I love nutmeg and it's very warming. So now that it's cold, sometimes when I have a cup of tea, I'll just put a pinch of nutmeg in there. It's wonderful. But this is the signature flavor, usually of nog. So put that in there. All right. So I think we have all the ingredients in there now. And now you need to puree this up until it becomes smooth. I always put a rag over the top of my food processor in case stuff comes out. Good idea. Can you use a Vitamix if you don't have a food processor, Kathy would like to know. What was the question? Um, can you use a Vitamix if you do not have a food processor? Oh, yes. You could use a Vitamix. You could use a blender. I always like to scrape it down because there's usually chunks of tofu in there, right? Do you have a preference? Like, Because I know that the aseptic boxes of tofu come in soft firm, extra firm, light. I, I know there's at least four varieties. Yeah, so the tofu that I got was firm. You can either get firm or extra firm in this silken variety. 
Very rarely do I use the soft because it's just too soft. I think we're done now. Yeah, uh, we got a little chunk in there, but that's okay. I'll just take those chunks out. That's what it looks like. Now I'm gonna put it in a pot. I'm gonna put it on the stove and I'm gonna warm it up. You can have your not egg nog, warm or cold. And uh, but if you want to drink it cold, warm it up first and then put it in the refrigerator. By putting it on the stove and warming it up, you're blending the flavors together. You're actually bringing out the flavors of it. It's more flavorful. Plus, tofu is made from soybeans, which is a high protein food. And it's actually easier for you to digest if you cook tofu than if you eat it right out of the package. Tofu is excellent protein food too. It contains all eight essential amino acids. I love tofu. I use it in a lot of recipes. <laughs> This is what it looks like. It's beautiful. I'm going to put it on the stove on a low heat. Or we're just going to heat it up. Now, um, the soybean, many people get confused about the soybean. Actually, soys are, soy is one of the most studied health foods out there because people get confused. You know, and unfortunately, a large percentage of the soybean crop has been genetically modified, which is why I always emphasize organic or non-GMO very important. But soybeans are high in calcium. They're high in iron. They have anti-cancer properties. They're fantastic for you. And they really work well to create thick um, sauces or th thick drinks and things like that, like what I just did. So they're wonderful. Uh, are there any questions so far? Let's see. Those are the ones I'm seeing in the chat. Uh, if you guys have questions, please type them in the chat. Tracy's saying, I froze something with tofu, but it wasn't good when it's thawed out. I think people do that if they're going to cook it, like, or air fry it or, or bake it, because it does give it more of like a chewy texture once you freeze it and defrost it. Some people want that texture. I'm not a fan of that texture, so. Right. Yeah. What are you making for your holiday dinner this weekend, if you are making one? Yeah, I'm getting together with my uh, family, uh, my mom, dad, my brother, my sister, and I am making stuffed delicata squash. It's stuffed with brown rice and broccoli and mushrooms and tempeh. I'm doing a millet mash with rutabaga. My mom loves rutabaga. And then I'm doing the mushroom gravy. I do cranberry sauce from scratch and fig blueberry sauce from scratch. In fact, most of those recipes I just talked about are in year-round healthy holiday dishes cookbook. And I just uploaded to my YouTube channel a video where I walk you through how to make fig blueberry sauce. Yeah. I created that recipe a few years ago because everybody likes to eat cranberry sauce, you know, for their holiday dinner, which is great. Cranberry sauce is a little too tart for me. So I thought, well, maybe I'll create something else using my favorite fruit, which was um, figs. I love figs. And originally it was uh, blackberries, but you could I substitute blueberries for it now. And you could do any one of those. So it's on YouTube, it's Chef Valerie Wilson. Yeah, and that's on there. And I just made my pies last night. Oh, I'd love to see your pie. This is pecan pie. That's gorgeous, Val. Now, this recipe is in my first cookbook, Perceptions in Healthy Cooking. And this one here is my mincemeat pie. I love I got the little, way you decorate. Yeah, little cats. We're a cat family, so we got little cats on there. The mincemeat pie, I only make at Christmas time because it's got a lot of ingredients. I, my this? recipes are usually simple. But this one's got a lot of ingredients. It's in, once again, it's in this cookbook. It's, I only make it once a year, Christmas. And uh, 
I remember as a kid, my grandmother used to make mincemeat pie. And so uh, when I wanted to create mine, I thought, well, I'll call grandma and I'll get her a recipe, right? So I call grandma. I'm like, hey, you know, I want to make mincemeat pie. I want to make it from scratch. I want to make it authentic. And she goes, well, you get some apples and you peel them and you cut them up. And then you go to the grocery store and you buy a jar of mincemeat filling. And I was like, what? All those years as a kid, I thought grandma was making this from scratch. Nope. She was going to the grocery store and buying the, I don't know, can or jar of it. Yeah, and I, it I've apples. seen it, but mincemeat isn't meat, right, Val? What is mincemeat? Well, a long time ago, they did used to put meat in the pie. It was whatever they had left, meat and fruit. That was a long time ago. So now fast forward, it's usually dried fruit. Um, there's usually apples and spices and they usually put some type of alcohol in it so mine i use figs again because they're my favorite dried fruit and i use pears just because i love pears and um raisins um i use the juice in the rind from one orange the juice in the rind from one lemon so there's lots of ingredients it's a very flavorful you know, and when I created the recipe and a lot of my recipes, I like to do research. Like what was the original mince meat pie? What was in it? How was it made? And it was fruit and meat, which it sounds absolutely gross, right? But let's just put fruit in it, like dried fruit and fresh fruit. And that's what we do now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Terrific. All right. So let's, let's make fig truffles. You ever heard of figgy pudding? You know, in that song now, make us a figgy pudding. What is figgy pudding? Have you ever made that? You know, I haven't made that one yet, but I have totally thought of it because yes, in the song, they sing about figgy pudding and haven't done that one yet. Here's a question from Apple watching live. What does macrobiotics suggest to increase energy and stamina? Okay, so first and foremost, you need to stop eating refined processed foods if you haven't already. And if you want energy, you need to eat whole grains. Every single time you sit down, you need to eat whole grains. For I've been teaching for 25 years, but I've been living this lifestyle for about 30. And every time I sit down, the largest portion on my plate is whole grains. Whole grains give your body energy because they digest very slowly. So they release glucose into your system very slowly, give you long, sustainable energy throughout the day. I have more energy than anybody I know. And this includes friends of mine that are 10 years younger. Um, quite a few years ago, I was giving lectures at the local library. And at every single lecture, I kept saying to the ladies in the audience, eat brown rice, eat brown rice. Whether the lecture was about overcoming cancer or it was, um, you know, soy foods or whatever the topic was. I always in my lectures say that. So there was two very nice ladies in the audience. And after they had come to quite a few lectures, they said, can we tell our testimonial? I go, absolutely. She said, you kept saying, eat brown rice, eat brown rice. She goes, and I didn't believe you, but I thought, Hey, why not give it a try? She goes, I could barely like walk to my car. She goes, now I am running up my stairs. She goes, and the only thing I did was I started to eat brown rice three meals a day. Like you said, every time I sat down, I ate brown rice. She goes, I am blown away. She goes, now I'm going to start doing the other things that you suggest because just by doing that one thing, she goes, I can't get over like how much energy I have and how much better I feel. So yes, your first thing you want to do is eat. Every time you sit down, look at your plate. You want whole grains on your plate. You want complex carbohydrates. And then, of course, you know, if, you know, you eliminate all the sugars and the processed foods. And, you know, the, if you watch Chef AJ, we don't talk about those things anyways. All right. Great. Have you ever heard of Dr. Walter Kempner and the rice diet? I've heard you talk about that. Yes. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we had one of the people that worked with him on the show. Yeah. I think I, I, people that are afraid of rice, well, people that are afraid of carbs, I don't get it, but I mean, rice is awesome. I love rice and I am not afraid to eat it. All the colors. I just did uh, my radio show, Real Food with Chef Val. Uh, and I read out of Paul Pitchford's book, Healing with Whole Foods, 
because I talk about brown rice all the time. I'm talking about it, you know, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to read out of this book. And if you want to know about brown rice, pull up that radio show because it's the antioxidants in it, the cancer fighting properties of it, you know, that it's just phenomenal what's in brown rice. That was, you know, and my radio shows you can listen to for free. You can go to macroval.com and just switch over there. So listen to Val's radio show. You know, I'm all about like you are, Chef AJ. Just we want to educate people. We want people to, I get so excited about food. Like other people like may not understand, but I create a new recipe and I'm like, oh, I'm so excited, you know, and, and, and it, and it tastes really good too. I want people to know that it tastes good. I don't want people to be afraid and think, oh, it's, it's going to be healthy. It's not going to taste good. Well, no, you know, it, it does taste good. It really does. You know, Dr. McDougall, who comes on once a month, says that in Asia, the greeting instead of hello or goodbye, it literally means, have you eaten your rice today? I heard him say that. Yeah, I like watching Dr. McDougall on your show for sure. He's wealth of information. Love that. Yeah, I also really enjoyed um, John Robbins' son, Ocean Robbins, when you talk to him. Yeah, he's great. That was one of the books, probably the book that like I was into macrobiotics and I was learning about healthy foods. But once I read that book, I'm like, OK, um, I'm going vegan, too. You know, after you read that book, it was oh, OK, done with all animal products for sure. You know, yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'm going right. to ask you this question, but I'm also going to answer it, too, if you don't mind. And it's what is the best nutritional approach to healing or preventing cancer? I'm going to let Val answer that, but also I'm going to put a link for you of a show I just did with Dr. Rogers about what to do if you get cancer, but I'll let you answer it in your way, Val, too. All right. Yeah. So there are what people don't understand is there are many different ways to heal the body. And, and, and you start eating healthy whole foods, you eliminate the processed foods, your body has the natural ability to heal itself, but you need to create the environment that healing will start, okay? So in the macrobiotic community, many people have overcome cancer. I personally have counseled and cooked for people that have overcome cancer by changing their diets. And I told the story last time I was on the Chef AJ show, which was April 8th, if you want to look it up. I did tell the story of how my dad overcame prostate cancer and he had no medical procedures whatsoever. I went out there and I worked with my mom and my dad. They changed their diet and he overcame prostate cancer just using food. Okay. So you have to eliminate the refined processed stuff, especially sugar. You know, we're talking about desserts. You got to get that sugar out of your diet. You really have to get it out. And dairy, dairy's huge contributor to cancer, unfortunately. And then you need to eat the whole grains, lots of vegetables, lots and lots of vegetables. And so that's the process of walking through cancer. But with all diseases that are going on in the body, and this is oriental medicine too, there's an emotional component to the disease also. And so once you start eating healthy whole foods and you get rid of all that junk, sometimes the emotions come to the surface and you're able to work through them. So you're not suppressing them. When you suppress all these emotions and they get stored in your body, that's where a tumor develops. That's where cancer develops. Now, I also offer lifestyle counseling. Like I mentioned, I have worked with people that have overcome health situations. We can do it over the phone. We can do it through Zoom. And of course, you know, the link is on the show and it's macroval.com. And I work, I work with food, really. Um, so yeah, definitely. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So fig truffles. Here I am getting all excited and talking and I forgot about the dog. So yeah, it, it just, it came to um, a little boil and then you just whisk it and uh, you can serve it, like I said, warm, or you could put this in the fridge and you could serve it cold. I'll serve it. Um, I'll show you like when we get to the aquafaba part of it, I'll put it in a fancy cup and we'll serve it. 
So um, fig truffles, another uh, simple recipe that starts with organic dried figs. And really important when you get dried fruit to get the organic, because if it's not organic, it has sulfur in it, and we don't want that. So when you get the dry figs out of the bag, so you have that little knob right there where the fig was growing, make sure you cut that off. That's hard. We don't want to eat that. So we cut that off and then we chop the figs into pieces. We put them in the food processor. So uh, figs, really high in fiber. I mean, they've got all those little seeds in them, right? Really good for your digestive tract. And also the fig tree was the tree that Buddha sat underneath when he acquired all of his knowledge. I, find, I found that very interesting. And let's see here, let me get a spatula. So we have um, one tablespoon of an apple sauce. I make my own jams. So this is like an apple jam I made with apples that I picked up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I picked them in the wild and I made my own jam. So we have one tablespoon. And, and you could use any type of neutral jam. You know, you could use a, a peach or a pear or an apple jam. Or if you can find fig jam, you could use fig jam and then it complements it. We have one tablespoon of water. And then we have one tablespoon of peanut butter. Now, if peanut butter is too much fat for you, just put an additional tablespoon of the applesauce. It's up to you. I absolutely adore peanut butter. I don't eat a lot of it, but I, I do eat peanut butter. So that's in the recipe. One tablespoon of peanut butter going in there. Now you puree this and you, you, you um, chop up the figs. So again, the truffle, the, the filling is going to be smooth. Well, it's going to still have texture because the figs have texture, but it's going to be smooth. All right. So this is going to be noisy when I turn this on, unfortunately, chop up those figs. Uh-oh, I think my food processor, I have to keep my hand on it or it, it shuts off. That's weird. Uh-oh. Uh yeah, that's no. frustrating when that happens. Oh, now it's working. You could also, you know, do this recipe with other type of dried fruit, like an apricot or a date. Figs are my favorite. As a, I think I've mentioned that like five times already, right? Figs are my favorite. How do you really feel? What is this thing I heard that there's a wasp kind of pollinating a fig? Like there's a, a stinger? What, what do you know about that? Oh, she must not be able to hear me with the machine running. Does anybody, has anybody heard of that about wasps and figs? I did hear that. I did. I'm not well-versed and knowledgeable about that. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'm the best person to speak on that. I do remember seeing something about it. There is the fig puree for the middle of the truffles. Now I like using a scoop. So all my truffles are the same size. And I just push it on there like so. And you're going to want to put these in the freezer because they have to be very, very cold to cover them with chocolate. This is um, just a pink um, silicon um, sheet. You could also put it on parchment paper and put it in the freezer, right? All right. So I do have some in the freezer already frozen so that we can... Cover it with the chocolate. Here's some frozen ones. All right, so the chocolate, you get yourself an unsweetened cocoa bar. I like the dark 
cocoa. This is four ounces. Um, I think I'm pretty sure the recipe calls for two ounces because I, I usually break the bar in half. You only need half of it to cover the truffle. All right, now we need to go to the stove to um, melt this chocolate. So I'm gonna move over here. And what kind of chocolate are you using? Because I remember, are you familiar with Chef Eric Le Chasseur? He's a well-known macrobiotic chef. And uh, he used to use something called Sunspire that was sweetened with barley malt, but they stopped making it. It was a wonderful product. Yes. Um, I am not familiar with that chef, but for over 20 years, grain-sweetened Sunspire chocolate chips were my go-to chocolate chips. I love them. And the company went out of business. So nobody, I, you know what, when they went out of business, I did research and I tried to make chocolate using brown rice syrup or a natural sweetener. And I could not get, you know how when you get a chocolate chip and you melt it and then you put it around, it's got like a hard coating. I could not achieve that. I, I you know, I tried, I couldn't, maybe somebody else can. So this truffle the chocolate coating is delicious, but it's kind of soft, which is fine, you know. So put your stove on a low heat, low heat, and put the two ounces of cocoa in there. This is what I have. Yeah, that's the what that's what I use. I and I sweeten it myself with date syrup. Yes, the hundred percent. It's easy to yep. find in a regular grocery store. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so then I add a quarter cup of brown rice syrup to this and you just melt it. Now, I um, on a low heat, you have to keep your eye on this because it could melt very quickly. There's been a few times where I've accidentally scorched this, right? And we don't want that to happen. So you wanna keep an eye on this to make sure that it melts very, very nicely. Um, let me show you another thing, another recipe. These are muffins. These are pumpkin pear muffins, and they have a little bit of turmeric in them. And in the middle is cranberry. Ooh, that looks delicious. These muffins are SOS. And I am teaching how to make them on Saturday, January 28th. Saturday, January 28th, I'm teaching how to make those muffins. It's virtual, so no matter where you live, you can attend. You can go to macrovale.com and sign up for that right now. In fact, oh, I've got something really cool happening in February. I just started advertising it. It's going to be a three-week series about the healing properties of um, food, but it's not going to be recipes. I'm going to teach how to make poultices compresses, teas, using food for their antibacterial, antifungal properties. I'm going to teach, you know, how to use them if you have swelling, if you have joint pains, um, how to, you know, heal wounds, like if you accidentally cut yourself with a knife. I'm going to go over onions, garlic, turmeric, ginger, comfrey, aloe, so I'm putting all that information together, but that's going to be three Saturdays in February. You're going to get all the information. And if you want, during the class, you can actually make the compresses and make the teas with me. I'm going to send you all the information ahead of time. And that information is on my website too. I'm really excited about this because I've been cooking with healthy foods for 25 years, but I've also been using the foods in various different ways to treat things that might happen to me, my family, or my cats. I have used some of these things like turmeric on my cats before, and let me tell you, they work. They really do. Now, um, this is not, you know, I'm not giving any medical advice or whatever. This is for your own personal information so that, you know, if anything, God forbid, happens to you and you have these foods available in your kitchen, you're going to know that you can use these things to help heal the body. See how fast that chocolate melted? 
Yes. And there's a question from Anastasia who's watching live. I like to melt chocolate in the microwave. Is that unhealthy? I'm going to let Val answer the unhealthy part because I know that macrobiotics don't believe in microwaves. I personally use one because Dr. Gregor and Dr. Furman and Dr. McDougall have said they're safe. However, as a former pastry chef, I think you run the risk of it scorching. And once it does that, you have to throw it out. So I'll let Val take it away. Okay. Yeah. I do not um, use or eat microwave food. I haven't in over 30 years. I'm going to take the truffles and dip them in the chocolate as I talk about that. So you just dip them like this. So a microwave changes the molecular structure of the food. It makes that big of a difference. Um, so if you take um, water and you microwave water and you um, have two plants, water one plant with water that you put in the microwave and water the other plant with water that you didn't put in the microwave. The one that you water the, with the microwave water, the plant will die. And so that kind of tells you that it's not natural. It's not good. Um, you know, and it, it has to do with energy. It's all like energetic energy. It's too chaotic radio waves. I don't recommend microwaves. There are um, other countries in Europe where microwaves are banned. They're illegal. They're that bad. So I do not recommend the microwave and I don't use it. Thank you. Here's another question. It is from Chrissy. Can I just use coconut oil and cacao instead of buying chocolate? I personally don't recommend any oil, especially coconut oil. It's higher in saturated fat than lard and none of the guests on this show, to my knowledge, use it or recommend it, especially the doctors. But I'll let Val answer that as well. Yes, I do not use coconut oil at all. I totally agree with you. There's a lot of vegan people and there's a lot of people that, you know, advocate for coconut oil because I got chocolate in my mouth. Sorry. The, um, <laughs> the coconut industry does a great job at marketing it, right? And say, oh my God, it's the healthiest thing ever. It's going to heal everything that's wrong with you. No, it's a saturated fat. I don't use it. In fact, in one of my cooking classes, um, I said, I don't use, uh, you know, coconut oil, blah, blah, blah. And people were asking me all these questions about it. Well, because we heard this, we heard this. No, no, no. And this lady came up to me afterwards. I wish she had said something in the class, but she didn't. She waited till she came up and privately said to me, I've been using coconut oil. I've been taking a tablespoon in the morning. I've been cooking all my food with it because they're telling me that it's so healthy. Do you think that's why I gained 10 pounds? And I went, yes. Absolutely. That's that's why you gain weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like she was she was overeating it, too. But no, I mean, I would definitely use the 100 percent cocoa for this recipe. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Here they are. Oh. Where's the camera? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> They're delish. I also have a, some of them. These have, these have been in the fridge because then after you dip them in the chocolate, you have to put them in the fridge, right? They look spectacular. Yeah, I can just break one open. I want you to see the middle. They're soft. Yeah, oh, they're so good. Wow. How do you store them in the refrigerator, in the freezer? Store them in the refrigerator. If you're going to have them for a long time, you can put them in the freezer. Yes. Okay. So aquafaba whipped cream. I, I started, I whipped it up before class because it's just very noisy to have your mixer going all that time. And I figured we'd probably run short on time. But if, for those who don't know, aquafaba is... Uh, the water from when you cook beans, aqua, water, faba, beans. I always save my liquid from the chickpeas, organic garbanzo beans. This is the best aquafaba. I have tried aquafaba from black beans, white beans, pinto beans, and I've tried whipping it up. The chickpea always works the best. And canned chickpea liquid works better than if you cook it yourself. I've done it both ways. They both work. 
This one gives you stiffer peaks. It's just nicer, okay? Let me turn this on. I want to bring it back up to its peak, but basically you start with one quarter cup of the aquafaba, which is like this. It's like nothing. And when I show it to you, it's light and fluffy. You whip it up like you used to whip cream a long time ago, right? And so it makes like a light, fluffy whipped cream. You can also make meringues with it. That's the cover picture on my dessert cookbook. That's lemon meringue pie. Aquafaba, because it's the water from cooking beans, it basically has no calories at all. It, but it has calories, whatever you put with it. So I put brown rice syrup with it. So the only calories in there come from the brown rice syrup. And of course, there's no fat whatsoever. Since I learned how to make aquafaba, it's probably probably about eight years ago, I love making it, but mostly I make it for a whipped cream or I freeze it and I make ice cream. All right, let me see what it's doing over here. So you take that little bit, that quarter cup, remember I showed you a quarter cup and you get all this whipped, okay? Now I do put a little bit of cream of tartar in there. This is a stabilizer so that your whipped aquafaba is firm, okay? As I mentioned in the beginning of the show, if you're gonna use a sweetener with aquafaba, you have to use Suzanne's brown rice syrup. You can't use the other brands. In fact, when I started to do original research, on aquafaba, everywhere I went, it said, you can't use brown rice syrup to make aquafaba. Well, I did some experimenting and I found out I can use Suzanne's. The other ones deflate the aquafaba and it's not stiff anymore. You can use maple syrup. Um, many people use sugar, which we do not want to use sugar in our aquafaba. I have not experimented with any other sweeteners. Um, I use brown rice syrup exclusively. So I'm gonna put one quarter cup of brown rice syrup in there. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this back on. You can see it, right? Yeah, I'm gonna turn this back on and we're gonna put the brown rice syrup in it. And that's it. Now, this was before class. I put this in here and it whipped for about 15 minutes. Get all that beautiful. Look at that peak. Isn't that nice? I just can't imagine who figured this out and how they figured it out. I looked up the history of it and um, it's actually confusing. A couple people claim that they're the creator of this, but um, some people say that it dates back hundreds of years. Some people say it was discovered in the 70s. So look at that. It's so awesome. When I discovered this, I was like over the moon. I'm like, what? Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. I'm sure that didn't sound good in the tape. Sorry about that. All right, let's do a presentation of the um, nog with uh, some beautiful whipped cream. A few more questions, if you don't mind. Linda says, where does one get brown rice syrup? I know you can get it online and I've seen it at Sprouts and Whole Foods. Yeah, the Suzanne, well, I'm in Michigan and that Suzanne's is not carried here by any store. I have to order it online. Okay. Um, how long does aquafaba whipped cream keep once it's been whipped, asked Lise. Not very long. Um, I've kept it for a day, but by the next day, um, the it has started to go back to water. So, yeah. Nice. And here's a question. 
how Janet wants to know, how do you make ice cream with aquafaba and can you put it in a creamy machine, Ninja Creamy? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm going to. Yeah. Uh, this is how you make aquafaba ice cream. Take this right here, put it in a container, put it in the freezer, which I always have this in my freezer. And once it freezes, it's ice cream. It's like a soft serve ice cream. It's very soft. I have also done like a strawberry. I've added strawberry to it. I've added chocolate to it. But when you add chocolate to it, it deflates. I've added sweet potato. I made a sweet potato ice cream. I've made pumpkin ice cream. Oh, it's just ever since I learned how to do this, I have not bought any vegan ice cream from the stores at all. This, this is what I do. That is really cool. Uh, Angela, Angela says, does freezing vegetables and fruit change their molecular structure? If so, if so, does this make them less nutritious? I don't know about if it changes the molecular structure, but everything I've read said it actually can make them even more nutritious. So I don't worry about it. You know, a lot of times when things are meant to be frozen, they flash freeze them and pick them at their peak of ripeness. So they actually may retain more nutrients than even organic produce that's been sitting on a truck for a long time. But uh, yeah, I'll let Val take a stab at that. Yeah, so exactly what Chef AJ said. No, the only thing that changes the molecular structure of the food is microwaves, okay? So yeah, sometimes the frozen um, is fresh and they flash freeze it. It does not change the um, nutrient qual quality of it. All the vitamins and minerals are there and everything like that. Uh, I often advocate in my cooking classes to get frozen organic vegetables. Cause a lot of people are like, well, I don't like to chop vegetables. I don't like to chop vegetables. Well then go buy frozen organic vegetables. You have no excuse to get more vegetables in your diet because they're the, the, you know, just more and more vegetables are, you know, in the supermarket frozen organic. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Chef Dell, who's going to debut his cooking show on Sunday, January 1st on this channel, Chef Dell's kitchen. See, he said he was even able to purchase brown rice syrup at mainstream grocery stores like Kroger. My Kroger years ago used to carry brown rice syrup. They don't anymore. Where? What What state is Chef Dell in? Uh, uh, Ohio. Oh, that's awesome. So he's going to be on your show? Yes, we're going to a new format next year. If you're on my mailing list, you'll know this. But instead of doing a different guest 365 days a year, we sent out an email in August to everyone who had been on the show asking if they wanted a monthly slot. We had over 100 people apply and we narrowed it down to 28. We'll be announcing that to our mailing list in just a few days. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm very excited. And Mary Beth, she did answer already that she does not use the microwave. She probably doesn't even own one. I, I don't own one. I haven't owned one in years. Raw food friends are bothering you with the molecular structure of frozen veggies. Well, Angela, it's the raw foodist that invented the tech. Well, I don't know if they invented it, but Chris Kendall is known for inventing a technique where raw foodists take a fresh vegetable like cauliflower or broccoli. They freeze it and they defrost it to change the texture, much like tofu does. So uh, I know that the raw fooders I know are, are freezing fruits and vegetables. You still there, Val, or did you freeze? Yeah, no, I'm here. Any more questions? Oh, good. No, no, not yet. Nope. Hey, I wanted to show you, Chef AJ, something. Now, I'm not sure if you know about this, but, you know, you recently moved and you were saying how you're so cold. I'm very cold. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen or gotten these hand warmers? You know, that's funny. You shouldn't mention that because I somebody just gave me. Where are they? I put them on this. Yes, I, I have not tried them yet, but Sarah, who helps me in my cooking classes, got me them. I think like they can have them at Lowe's and stuff, but is they're one time use, right? Yeah, these are one time use. These are invaluable, especially here in Michigan. Like when I go shovel snow, I put them in my gloves. I use these all the time. They're fantastic. Now this is um, what it, this one's similar. This is a hand warmer that you plug in and you charge it. And this one's a little bigger, but this gets very warm. I use this also. This one is, and it also will um, charge your cell phone. 
This is like a recharger for your cell phone. So this is another type of warmer device that you can keep with you to keep you warm. That is so cool. I'm learning so many new things. I, my my brother-in-law is a golfer and he puts something in his socks. When I go hiking up north in the Upper Peninsula, if it's very cold, I have done that. I have put them in my socks. So I, I don't know if your listeners or your people, they know what the Upper Peninsula of Michigan is, but Michigan, we have the Lower Peninsula and we have the Upper Peninsula. And I go to the Upper Peninsula as often as possible. It's just beautiful forests and waterfalls and mountains. It's gorgeous. And so every year I make a calendar of the Upper Peninsula. These are all pictures that I've taken throughout the year. And each month has like um, a four line poem that I wrote about up north also, because I absolutely love nature. So I'm always going out in nature. So this is something else that I do is I write poetry. I take pictures of nature. That's very cool. You're very, very multi-talented. Yeah. So here's our pumpkin eggnog with aquafaba whipped cream. That is so pretty. It's like, like going to a fancy coffee shop and getting Irish coffee. Now I broke this one apart so you could see the filling, but there's the truffles. Yeah. Yes, it is very fancy. It's like, um, you know, you need to treat yourself. You know, you're sitting at home and you just want to relax and have a fancy drink. And you don't have to worry about it being really high in sugar or high in fat or bad for you. This is it's like perfect for, you know, uh, beautiful apple saying these are lovely holiday treats. I couldn't agree more. And Mary Beth says, where can she buy the calendar you showed? On my website, macrovale.com. Everything's in oh. the show notes. She's watching on Facebook, so I don't think Facebook viewers can see the show notes like the YouTube viewers are right below the video. Yeah, so go to my website. There's a lot of information there. You can also sign up for my newsletter that will keep you posted of all the cooking classes that I teach and all the special events like the upcoming three-week series I was talking about um, in February. And the website also has a recipe of the month. This month, it is a peach black raspberry crisp, another dessert out of the new Simply Healthy Scrumptious Dessert Cookbook, um, a, veg or a fruit crisp. That one's a really easy, simple recipe um, for you to do. And I also have a YouTube channel. I have a subscription Patreon channel where I have exclusive cooking videos, all sharing recipes like this. I teach cooking classes on a regular basis. If you're here in Michigan, I have some in person, or of course I have the virtual ones that anybody can attend. And I'm always creating new recipes. So if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get notified about all the new recipes that I'm teaching and all the new cooking classes. Nice. Uh, well, Jane says your calendar is spectacular. And so was your demonstration today. Thank you so much for it. And I wish you a very happy, healthy holiday season. Yeah. Thank you, Jane, for tuning in. She's one of my regular students. Oh, nice. Yeah. Thank you, Chef AJ. It has been a pleasure. Thank I you. I really, really am impressed with that whipped cream in it. And it just, it just stayed standing stiff like that. That's incredible. Never saw that before. Well, thank you, Val, and thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 2 p.m. today. We have a bonus show. I will be speaking with the author of a new book called The Oldest Cure in the World. It's about fasting. His name is Steve Hendricks, and he'll not only talk about the science behind fasting, but about the time he spent at True North. And if you still have a few people on your list and need a last minute gift, my book is on sale on Amazon right now. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to this channel. Maybe give me a thumbs up and come back.